At four and a half years old, tipping on five, I got locked in an unplugged freezer in a garage. I was in there a very long time. I did pass away. And I remember every detail of my experience from beginning to end. And when I came back from that and got well, I could see people. And I was terrified. Welcome, Susan, to the studio. Um, you are a psychic medium with over 30 years of experience doing this. Uh, welcome to our studio. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So, Susan, how, um, how long have you been doing this? Uh, most of my life. All of my life, actually. What made you, like, how did you, where did, it, where did you start picking up on this? Um, when I was about three years old, I remember seeing animals float when they would pass, and that, that just was. I never asked anyone, do you see them? I never, um, I never thought anything of it. I didn't even think about it, it was my normal. So it just simply was. At four and a half years old, tipping on five, I got locked in an unplugged freezer in a garage. I was in there a very long time, I did pass away. And I remember every detail of my experience from beginning to end. And when I came back from that and got well, I could see people and I was terrified. So hang on. <coughs> so you had passed away and how long were you, how long did you pass for? We don't know. I was in a freezer in a garage that wasn't plugged in and my mother heard your baby's in the freezer and she didn't go. And so they know that I was probably in there probably over 2 hours. Wow. So I mean there is some oxygen in there when you first get in and a little girl but I remember here I was screaming. And I remember it, it must have been going through coils, you know, as little. I don't have every detail, but I have every detail of what happened yes. to me. And I remember hearing, stop screaming. We'll get your mommy. And I saw these bright lights. And um, I don't have any concept of looking down and seeing my body. Some of the things that, you know, people say that um, are phenomenal things that happen to them. Um, I worked with Dr. Raymond Moody and got my doctorate in ministries of NDEs with him. Um, he's such a blessing, and he is life after life. He's a, a famous, he coined the phrase near-death experience. Mm -hmm. And um, he said to me, not everyone sees their body, and not everyone sees the tunnel. I saw a well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's so, what happened. So, so you, you had this experience. You were, uh, so you were five, right? Did you say five? I was four and a half. Four and a half, okay. Four and a half. So you, your mom calls the the, the doctor that you take him to the hospital how, how does that progress like you go to the hospital you wake I up I didn't go to the hospital oh. so here's the story okay. um, I'm in the freezer okay. and my mom hears your baby's in the freezer I got crossed over I remember seeing uh, and that's a long story but beautiful beautiful things the room of hearts desires the room of knowledge the room of companions all these different rooms that I was taken to and my mother um, heard again your baby's in the freezer yeah. finally she got it and I remember that's how, I feel like that's how I learned to communicate with spirit, yeah. to be honest with you, because I saw them talking to her and she could hear them. And so I felt like oh, that had some meaning. I yeah. needed to know that. And of course, later on in life, all that downloaded what all this meant. Yeah. Um, but she says she came out, she ran out to the freezer and the garage door was closed. It was separated from our house by quite a distance for a child. Yeah. And she flung open the garage door and she opened up the freezer door and she said that she spun me around and I was ashen. And she said I wasn't breathing. And she doesn't, they didn't have cell phones, so she, she let go of me to go run and call 911 wow. in the house. And I fell and I hit my chin, which is still, the scar is still there. I'll never remove wow. it. <laughs> <laughs> and I took a breath. And I was very floppy and like jello, my mom said, and she was afraid to tell my father because she was supposed to bolt it down and turn it towards the wall like all parents were supposed to do at that time because so many kids were dying wow. and she hadn't done it. So she didn't want to tell my dad, so she, my sister and her put me in bed. Wow. And I woke up fine, except for she thought I had brain damage because I was talking about, you know, she truly did. She laughs, laughed about it yeah. as she got older, but... Um, I kept seeing people and they were talking to me. They were everywhere in the corner of my room, down the hallway, under my bed, over my bed, so you name it. Being a kid and seeing that, were, were you not afraid? Like Terrified. Okay. So when I hear a medium say they saw spirits when they were little and they had no fear, it shocks me. Because having people talking to you in the dark 
as a little girl is like the boogeyman. Mm -hmm. And I liken it to that because what happened to me is it became somewhat my normal to be afraid yeah. and to hear all this. And I figure everyone had a boogeyman, no one talked about it. Yes. I thought everybody saw what I saw and nobody was talking. So that became my normal. Abnormally normal is what I call it because somewhere inside of me I knew that this wasn't normal, all these visits all my life, but I didn't know what was abnormal about it. D did your mom try to suppress this, like, or try to hold back? Hey, you're not seeing something, it's your imagination. Was she trying to... Sometimes, but my mom was gifted and afraid oh. of it. Wow. They actually found my mom in a corner, hysterical, and took her to a hospital at one point in our journey uh, when we were little because she was talk seeing, hearing spirits, and she didn't know what it was. And I really believe that that's what happened to her because as she talked to me later in life, she'd say, well, I, I broke down. I had a breakdown from things that I was experiencing. And she wouldn't go into any great detail, but she'd always say to me, you know, you're an angel. You don't understand. And I'm not. But, you know, that my mother was trying to explain it that yeah. way to me. So I wouldn't be afraid. Um, so she had the gift. My sister had the gift. Uh, not quite as intensive as me. But, uh, she's more of a healer in a yes. different arena, physical healer. Yeah. But I definitely was the viewer. And um, I saw them, felt them, knew them, heard them, experienced them in every Claire. Claire just means clear. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't just clairvoyant. I had all the claircognizant, claire, claire, you know, all of them. Yes. And so... Um, I didn't understand all of this energy coming in was so overwhelming to me. So, so I mean, growing up with this, I mean, you having the ability and others who don't, how does that make you feel going through the world? Because a lot of people won't understand. Well, if you talk to anyone who I was raised growing up with that I do know now, um, I was on the outside looking in all of my life. And they say, they, they say we knew something was different about you and wrong, but we didn't know what it was, okay. so we picked on you. Yeah. And I was bullied because while they were playing, I was seeing their grandmother or I was seeing spirits around them. Mm -hmm. I was tired because I was woken up all night long. So I never got, I had a sleep disorder even as a child. Um, still do, except for I set boundaries. Yes. Um, but yeah, I was different. And so I didn't really fit in and I didn't know who I was. I was extremely kind and uh, I still am. I was extremely honest, and I still am, and I was, ex um, and, and, and everyone has their white lies. I won't yeah. say that I'm, I'm perfect, and no one is, but, but I always tried to be the best person I knew how to be, always, and I was always trying to heal everybody, it. and it got so overgrown because nobody would believe me that I became almost codependent in it, yes. trying to fix everyone with this gift that I didn't understand. Um, and they didn't like that, you know, they wanted me not to be so serious and so tender yeah. and y kids are like that. So they bully you. Yes. And I think, you know, when I see kids get bullied now, I know, you know, they're probably empaths. Yeah. And so that's why I like to work with them. And some of them have had near death experiences, you know, so it, I see me yes. and how I was and what it looked like to others. But what it really was is I wanted to be loved and I wanted to give love. And that's who I was. So, like, th this was a call. This was inside you already. You're feeling this calling coming out, and you just need to share it. It's like it was already embedded with you. But how to bring this seed out of you, or how to make the seed grow, was really what this path was actually kind of giving you, right? Because if you're seeing people and you're yeah. caring, uh, like a like a light warrior, if you want to call it that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was a warrior. I've been through a lot. Um, I think that people see it as an extension of themselves when they have this gift, and it's not. It's a part of them. Yeah. And if you see it as an extension, then you're trying to figure it out and pull it in instead of w going inward and seeing it as part of you, and then it goes out. Yes. And if you can shift that energy and that understanding of it, it gives you empowerment to then grow in it. Yes. And I think for me, it was never an extension of me. It was just part of me. And, you know, through my journey, when I say I've gone through a lot, I had a lot of childhood. I was uh, trafficked uh, uh, with, uh, that's a long story, but it, as a child, very briefly for three or four years. And um, everyone pictures trafficked as being sold out on the street. Mm -hmm. That's not it. That can be it, yeah. but it's not it. I have two brothers and a mother who committed suicide. I have um, uh, uh, my one of my best friends committed suicide. And so suicide's very prevalent in my life. When I w I'm saying this because when I was young, um, I remember them telling me, you're going to go through a specific energy or journey that's going to be extremely painful for you, but you're going to take that and not become the victim of it, but become better because of it. 
And, and I did. I expanded myself. Every loss I had expanded me into a, a greater place of understanding of what we're doing here. Yes. And what can I do with this to help others? Mm -hmm. So with that not being an extension and part of me, that also became part of me. I have to do something with this. So I became a counselor. So, 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 like with that, I mean, with this, I mean, with the the deaths that were around you, this really makes you very tough for what you're going through in that beginning journey of where the world is telling, well, spiritualism is coming out now, but it made you very tough to handle a lot of blocks being thrown at you. Because um, I could still see it, like going through that, and people. I'm a powerful force. You're, I can feel it. <laughs> yeah, I'm a powerful force, and I don't fear because I have angels, and I know that and they crossed me over and they brought me back. But I also know that every experience I've ever had has made me a better person. Yeah. And um, what happens to people that are victimized, because people are victimized and the world victimizes us, is then they get victimized for being yeah. a victim. Yeah. If they're hurt or they're sad. And I didn't take it in that direction. I let myself be that victim of the circumstance and then I healed it and then I utilized it for the greatest good. And it's just part of who I am. You know, it, I just, I grew stronger. And that doesn't mean that there aren't times where I sit and cry. I still do. And I think, what am I doing here? I, this world is so harsh, and yes. I, I don't know what I'm doing here. And then I get over it, and I go on. So sometimes I do feel sorry for myself. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay, because it's part of the human condition. Yes. And without that, I don't understand somebody else who comes to me that feels victimized or feels sorry for themselves. We have this connotation that uh, we can feel sorry for others, but we cannot do that for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We can heal others, but we can't do it for ourselves. And we can give love to others, but loving ourselves is our greatest gift. Mm -hmm. And it's the hardest of all, and it's the sole purpose. People tell me the sole purpose is their job. Mm -hmm. That's about this much of it. The rest is self-love and knowledge and then love of others. It's the hardest thing we do. And if we can achieve that here, we're going to be greater and grander. And I still haven't achieved mm. it fully. So, <laughs> you know, I'm still on the path. Yes. And I think if I ever do, I'll probably be gone. And I'm not ready to be gone, so I'm okay with going slow. Yes. But I am developing that understanding more and more. I'm, I'm, I'm 62 this week. And you look great. Thank you. <laughs> um, and I just know that... Um, my journey as I get older, I'm understanding it more. I'm understanding what's really going on. Uh, my heart uh, my heart center understands what I need to do. And you've touched many people's lives. So along your journey, the healing of others, I mean, how many people through grief or I need to know what's going on in my life, the amount of people that you've touched, I mean, that's the rewarding part, I would presume for you, is giving more. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love helping people. If I had the energy and the confidence, because I know as strong as I am as a, you know a, a, as a person, I lack confidence. I don't always yeah. believe this is real. You know, people say to me, "Well, how do you always know yeah. spirits there?" I said, "I don't." There are times where I go to work and I say, "This is all crumb. This is all nonsense. Mm -hmm. I don't believe this. I'm I'm faking people. Oh my God, I'm going to go to whatever. I don't even believe in. Yeah. in your where mind, am I going right? to go because of what I'm doing?" <laughs> Um, I'm hurting people, and yes. that goes through my head, and I go, oh, my God, you know, um, because people like us are called grief vampires, yes. which is horrible. Yes. Um, and then I, my, my staff will say to me, well, Susan, when you get done with your readings today, come out and talk to me about how you're feeling. And I come out and go, it was impossible. <laughs> I couldn't get that information. <laughs> it's real. It's real. You know, and I'm full of life because yeah. my greatest fear was being an opposer, an imposter. Yes. And I think that's every human's greatest yes. fear. And in some ways, I guess that's part of just learning about ourselves and growing beyond the fear, yes. which, um, you know, is what can dictate us. And I, I tell people what you fear, you feed. Yes. And so, you know, if I can move through that fear, I don't have to be feeding it. And so I talk about it. Yeah. And then I, I work through it. So when, now when people are coming, let's say people are coming for a reading to you, like there's people mm -hmm. who block you, right? And all of a sudden you can't connect, Some, like with somebody coming in and you really connect with them and you feel it and you're saying, wow, this is what's going to happen, this is how things, this is who's coming through. Now the ones who block it, are they not supposed to know or why would they try to block it if people are trying to block what's coming? Because sometimes you just have a, a bad day, hang on, it's not, I'm not connecting. And obviously you have self and then you have uh, the astral part of what you're trying to do. How do you help people who are coming to you? Um, I've not had someone not connect after talking with me. 
But what I can tell you is that what I'm saying to them is, um, first of all, if I couldn't connect, I always tell them, I'm going to refund your money. That's their big fear. They're going to get ripped off. Yeah. And so you have nothing to lose to let go and let me do this. And the more you let go and allow, the better this reading will be for you. And I you know, explain to them how I became a reader, and that yeah. kind of loosens them up. But ultimately what happens is, is these men or women that come in and they're stoic, and yeah. especially men. Yeah. Now that my wife brought me here, and and as minute the minute they say it, I go, oh boy, spirit's focused on you. They're gonna teach you something in here, and they go, oh, yeah, 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 you know. And then they leave crying. They leave saying, I am blown. I cannot believe what I just experienced. I am a complete doubter, and now I'm a complete believer. What just happened? Mm -hmm. And most of the time, that's it. With these people who debunk mediums, it's very easy to do, by the way unfortunately, because if you claim a person, I don't know your story, yeah. I don't know your person. So if someone comes through and you say, that's mine, and you have a story behind it, somebody will come through and start talking. Imagine if you couldn't speak yeah. and communicate for seven years, and one day we're sitting in a room and I hear you, yeah. and, I and I respond to you, and then I go back to whoever's in the room and they're talking, and then you say something else in your head, and I come back and respond to you. Yeah. You would badger me to be yeah. able to talk. And that's what they do. So they're going to keep talking. So it's not hard to debunk someone when you're a liar yes. and when you're deceitful because it's your story that's right. and you're making it up. I can't know that. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't want to. You know, I want to believe and trust. So when they come in and they recognize, oh, my gosh, I may have come in with a story even yeah. and hear this reality is coming at me. It's mind blowing to them. Yeah. So it my, blows my mind. This is what happens to me. This is the truth. Yeah. So they say, um, oh, my God, I can't believe. And they put their hands, and my head's going, oh, my God, I can't believe I just said that. Yes. I'm doing the same thing they're doing, but I'm doing it silently. It's my secret, <laughs> so <laughs> we can't tell. But, um, but it's true. It's yeah. what I do. And, and I, I feel how they feel. I'm blown away. Yeah. I've been working with people in India in a mom, mom, Mumbai. Mumbai? Yeah. Yes. And it just started happening, and I said to one of the girls, your father's going to speak to you through bird, and it's going to be really soon. And not a bird coming to your window, but speak to you through a bird. I don't understand it. She would got the shot two days later. She just wrote me, and she's, she is in shock because what came to her was a bird to walk her through the fever that she got. And she said, and then her father's hand was on her. And she said, she's blown. I said, so am I. So am I. This is mind blowing <laughs> to me that yeah, it comes I, to fruition. Yeah, I, I think that the the question of like when I like I've been places and I've said something, I'm trying to double check it. I'm saying, hmm, did it really happen? Are you going to tell me that there's confirmation? And I'm waiting to hear that from them. And I'm thinking to myself, hmm, am I? Is it in my imagination? Or am I telling them? And I'm waiting for that confirmation. And they go, then they text me, this was fantastic. So I, I get that yeah. feeling because I'm questioning myself too, and I'm trying. Like, yeah. mm, this you know why we question ourselves? Why do we question ourselves? Ego. Ego, it's ego is fear. That's what ego is, unless you're a sociopath yes. uh, or a narci severe narcissist. Ego is fear for impasse. And so we question ourselves because we develop fear that we're not doing it right or we're not enough or we didn't. It's not about um, tell me I'm good. It's not about that. It's about the fear of not being enough and of harming. And we go there. It's like, am I crazy? Yes. Am I crazy that yeah. I just said that? I need, you know, and then when it comes to fruition, we go, oh my gosh, <laughs> how did that happen? Yeah. I'm blown away. Yeah. Well, it happens through spirit. And we recognize that, that we're the conduit. But without us, they can't talk. So we do have a power yeah. position in that. We're empowered is what I mean by saying that. Yeah. And so when we accept that empowerment, it takes kind of that away a little bit, that feeling of, oh, I need to know, I need to know. It's wonderful now when I do, but I see so many people that they all don't write me, yeah. and so I, I don't know. But then a year later, two years later, they come back to me, and they'll yeah. say, I have a lot of repeat clients, and they'll say, oh, my God, they're blown away. Yeah. They can't believe it. And, and they tell me, and I just smile, and I go, I don't know how I... They go, how did you know? I go, I don't know. Yeah. It has to be spirit. I can't answer that. So with, with sometimes with physical objects or things that are turning up, so like people will have a feather turn up in their house, or they'll have a, a rock turn up in their front living room. Living room. When, when objects like this, when these signs are being given to people, is this just because they, they're not getting the communication or this is a sign that they just don't recognize? 
Sometimes they by bypass it, so they're getting feathers all the time and they don't see it, and yeah. or the feather's there, and then they think of their loved one and look down, and there's the feather. Yes. So sometimes it's just that. Sometimes they're maneuvering things. They're energy. Energy is very powerful. And, you know, I tell people, if you think of the energy in a wall, the electricity in a wall, and you plug in a light and, and you turn the switch, which is what we have is that yeah. dial that we can turn it up and down, um, it, it, the light goes on. But if you unplug it, it doesn't stop the energy from going yeah. through the wall. Yeah. It just means you've unplugged the, the conduit, basically. Okay. Okay. Or the, not, I guess the wall is the conduit, <laughs> but, the, but the item. Yes. So they're able to maneuver things. Unless you're asking for Alexa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Um, but yeah, they're, they're able to maneuver things. I've had people, but I also believe that maybe we set our keys down in some place that we don't know, we don't remember, and then they make us go through all this trauma, and then you think of them, and then they, you get the, there's my keys. Yes. Right? You get the, mem the reminder or something. Mm -hmm. It could be that. I can't answer it fully, but I do know they're capable of it. Do, do you feel like the evolution, <clears throat> like right now, like things are speeding up more in terms of people now becoming to m being drawn more towards uh, the spiritual inside or the energy side that's inside us? Do you feel like it's speeding up now from a few years back or, or 10 years ago? Do you feel like people today are starting to pick up more on it or trying to understand it more? Absolutely, because they have to have somewhere to turn. The world is very upside down, and it has been for many, 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 many years. Yeah. And uh, spiritual bodies, our, our emotional bodies, and our brains are all uh, dis disconnected, and they need to integrate. They need to understand why these things are happening to them and, and what's going on in the world for them, their world. Yeah. And so they've gone to doctors, they've gone to psychologists, they've gone to counselors yeah. like me, they've gone, you know, and they've done years of therapy, and they're not healing because the world is still the world. And then they come in, and, and they heal somewhat, but not to the totality that they'd like to or the, or the for fruition of what they want. And then they come into a, a medium or an intuitive, I choose to call myself, um, and they get two years' worth of healing in an hour. Yeah. And they walk out just in a completely different space and time right. and a different understanding. So, yes, I think that it's expanding. I also think that we are starting to understand it scientifically. So Alexand Ebner Alexander, do you know who he is? Um, proof of Heaven. Yes. Okay. He was a famous neuro neurosurgeon, is a famous neurosurgeon, and he had a near-death experience, and he has really led the way. He's friends with Dr. Raymond Moody, and he's led the way for people to understand the truth of afterlife. So now scientists are getting involved in trying to understand it yeah. or debunk it. Yes which makes them get involved in understanding it. Yeah. Whether they're trying to debunk it or understand it, it's the same thing with a client. Whether they're in to debunk me or to understand the afterlife, they're going to get the experience. Yeah. And so they're going to have a different viewpoint either way. You know, and I tell people good and bad are equivalent in value, they both teach us something. Yes. So that includes our clients, that includes me, that includes everyone. So like, what about the, the negative spirits? So now obviously you hear about negative spirits coming around, causing trouble. Um, trying to scare people, create fear inside people. Um, how, how does that play a role in what you do or what you pick up or when you can walk to a room and you feel, I feel something wrong here or I feel something? How, how often does that happen? Well, there's imprints. Um, I have to tell you, I don't believe in negative spirits attacking people. If okay. they were that powerful, we'd all be thrown through windows and stabbed okay. to death and, 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 you know, terrible things would happen. So um, they wouldn't stop at boo, basically. Okay, mm. so but I do feel there's imprints and, and negative uh, imprints of people who have lived here, the damage they've done. So I can walk into a room and see someone hanging, and I could go one of two places. I could go, oh my God, this place is haunted. Someone's hanging, you know, I'm like, you know, and they're scaring me. Or I could go to get down from there if you want to have a conversation with me. Mm. I know now how you died. Yes. So yes. how we view it is very important. Fear again, what we fear, we feed. So I don't entertain it, and I don't have fear. And when I do start to step into any kind of fear, I stop immediately and say, wait a minute, the spirit world loves us. They are protective of us. They aren't harming us. And me, when I hear people say we have to help these people cross over, yeah. I have a little bit different belief system, and I honor theirs. But what I believe most importantly is that spirit's capable of doing anything and everything, and I am... Uh, be very very unusual for me to have the power that they don't yeah. 
Okay, so if they can't cross them over, what am I thinking? That I'm going to? That they're going to listen to me and not the spirit world? So it all kind of has to make sense to me in order to be right. And that includes the um, evil spirits, what people choose to call evil spirits. I choose to call spirits that have an imprint, um, that may want to tell their story, um, that may be doing healing work and having to look at it. I do believe this, though. As people die which people are dying all over all the time, and if they're sociopathic or if they're evil in some form on this planet, and you are uh, able to pick up energy, they may go through you and many others on their way out, and that's terrifying. So, so when you say pick up, you mean pick up as in like take all the spirits with them? Is that what you're s- No, no, their spirit as they're leaving this planet to go to the next yes. level, they might go through your energy and you're gonna feel that evil they may stand in your room because they haven't gone all the way there yet. It. it takes a little while to get there, and yes. it's very brief. And when I say a little while, I think that for me it was, for me it was probably 15, 20 minutes. To them it was moments, right. right? And so I had to go through this process. Brain dying is a process to get, and you're not in the spirit world till you're in that space of having something stop in your brain or right. go into a particular area of your brain to reach them. Yeah. So I believe that they probably go through a lot of people in the middle of the night or in the day, anytime. And we, as, as empaths, are very uh, sensitive to that. Yes. And we pick it up and we go, whoa, what was that? I need to get out of here, yeah. you know? <laughs> so, um, and so it just depends on where we are. But I really don't think, and this is just my belief system, and I hope people can honor it because yes. I honor theirs. Yes. Um, but I don't entertain it. What you entertain becomes your truth. Uh, what you perceive to be is. So if I perceive myself to be wealthy and I have a nickel in my pocket, I will be wealthy because it's my perception. If you perceive evil around you, you will have evil around you because it's your perception. So do we pull in then those energies that are leaving the planet and the imprints of the people who were here that were evil? Yes, because that's our perception. And as an empath, you're picking that up even more then, right? Because you're feeling that. Yes. So actually, it's it's funny because actually when my wife had passed, so she was she was on life support with a, a gastric cancer, and I remember at the moment at and three o'clock she in the spoke m- to me before I came. <laughs> okay, don't want to stop me crying now. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I told my husband, oh, his wife had stomach cancer of some sort. I'm in the on the way here, and he goes, what? And I go, God, watch me be wrong. So so, so she was. Uh, so I remember at three o'clock in the morning when it was about to happen. So she had passed about se- I think it was seven or eight a.m. And at three o'clock in the morning, I knew it was happening then. And I remember where I felt her mother come into the room, mm-hmm. and her mother was there helping her cross. Or th- again, this perception. <laughs> um, you were correct. So so I was um, feeling that, and then. That was actually when everything was okay. So now when I had called everybody in the morning, I said, everybody just to come because I think this is the day. And everybody had come and I could see them throwing things around and kicking things and slapping themselves off what happened, what happened. And it, it was really just, it was like a, an understanding for me. Mm-hmm. Like the understanding had just happened. Mm-hmm. So, or the acceptance of it. So it was, a, it was an interesting experience, like just a, just a feeling yeah. that and feeling the emotions going in that room. Yeah, well, their, their, their bodies aren't here but their spirits don't pass over. They actually are literally a heartbeat away. If your heart stops, you're there. So their vibration is right next to you. And when you think of it that way, if your heart stops, you're there. That's powerful. You're with them one beat. You're with them. And so, you know, that's how far they are. If you think about it that way, it's not very far. Um, but I, I know what you're, you're talking about. When my, when my sister-in-law passed, I had called the hospital. She had cancer, brain cancer, and we were young. And I called the hospital and they said, oh, she's doing just fine. You know, I worked in hospice and hospitals and she's, you know, all her stats are up. And I was like, oh, great. We're not going to lose her today. And and I was feeling really good about that. And and um, about 20 minutes later, she went through me. It was like a, um, saying goodbye. I could feel her whole soul. It was th- probably the most intensive experience I've ever had with a soul going through me. And I knew it was her, and I just broke into tears. And everyone said, what's wrong with you? And I said, I, I know she died, and 15 mi- minutes later, my father called. So, um, But she went through me to say goodbye. So, yes, we have a knowing. Yes. When we're in touch with our spiritual self, even when we're not aware of it, we have a knowing. And if you're not, again, a narcissistic sociopath or, or b- either or, um, you're going to be closer to empathic energy. 
And I say closer because there are different levels of impasse. And, uh, and then there's kind of what we call normies or what I call normies that don't go either direction. They're not mm. overly empathic and they're not overly self-centered. They're kind of in the middle, which is not too bad because that's a self-care place. Um, we are more selfless and that's not healthy either. So they're kind of in the middle of yes. the pendulum. And um, and are, are they in the middle of the pendulum because they're... They're born that way. Okay, so they have this, they're still experiencing what they're sold to experience. Yes, so their souls are, are maybe their older souls, younger souls, I don't know. You know, I can't make that decision for them. Um, but they, for some reason, uh, have the self-care to not have to be on the top of the pendulum in the direction of selflessness. When I consider the pendulum uh, that one top is selfishness, one side is selflessness, where if we get selfish at all, we go, oh my God, I'm a horrible mm -hmm. person. Um, and then there's the center of that pendulum, which is self-care. And in that center is where I see kind of the normies where we're more, we're on the pendulum kind of partially up or way up on the selflessness. Yeah. And then the sociopath or psychopath is on the way up on the self, uh, selfish, selfishness. And so you kind of can get an idea what a normie y means. Yes. Um, so orbs, um, even when you walk in this room, you said that you felt there were orbs in here. And actually it's- uh, I saw it actually. Oh, <laughs> so um, what are orbs? For people who don't understand orbs. So orb is a really, quick way um, for the spirit world to travel. If you think about how efficient that would be to be a ball of light, yes. and when we talk about the, the light, you know, plugging into the wall, the electrical power that they have, the, the energy they carry, think of how efficient that is. Mm -hmm. And so they travel that way. Um, so if I have, uh, I, I love them, I'm very attached to them. Um, I don't know if you saw the website where the heart came. I saw it. I, that was a week that I had dealt with children passing all, every day, all day. It was really bizarre. And I was sitting on the couch when that happened, and I was crying, and I was telling spirit in my office, I don't want to do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. I'm, I'm, my heart is breaking. My soul is getting hurt by this, which souls don't get mm -hmm. hurt. Um, but that's what I was saying, and I'm just sitting there, and, then I'll, and I'm looking through my camera because I want to know they're around when I'm talking. And it's actually a um, we're security. Gonna post, we're going to post that video as well, by the way. Oh, it wonderful. Good. It was a security camera that it picks it up. Yeah. That's why it's black and white. It's just an ADT security camera. Yeah. And um, and you see a lot of uh, uh, bugs and you see some dust. Yes. And there's a big difference in what that looks like. And then all of a sudden it starts showering orbs. Mm. And then they stop. And this heart, they stop when you look at it. They stop showering just in an instant. And this heart, uh, and it came up in the air, and it was bright, and I saw it, and I went, oh, my gosh, what are you? I mean, I literally said that. And it dropped down, and I had the still shots of it going down because I did it, yes. right? And it went, it just into this, like, light explosion. Yes. But um, I knew what they were saying to me, and I knew that was a very special message of your soul is okay. We've got your heart. Keep going. Makes me want to cry. Yeah. Um, it was life changing for me. It was beautiful. I saw it, I saw the video. I thought it was very beautiful. And then all the orbs came back in. Yeah. All of a sudden, it, it like crowded shower. again. Yes. Yes. But they almost gave space to it. I knew that it was either an angel or ascended master. I knew it. I knew it wasn't loved ones because of how they presented with it. The other orbs that they backed away basically and said, it is, you know, move forward. Um, it was um, a beautiful hierarchy in a, in a way of feeling yeah. that I can't explain. So I knew it was a message. It's, it's funny because I, I, I was hearing stuff downstairs in my house and I have a, a camera where I can see it on my phone and I was looking and I was seeing orbs. I recorded the video in my house and I'm trying to question myself saying, hey, is it dust? This can't be because at two o'clock in the morning I'm seeing them go back and forth and I'm questioning it in my own mind and uh, we may end up posting that one too. Yeah. But uh, it, it really was like I was questioning but I was hearing footsteps yep. is what woke me up. So now this is happening at two, three o'clock in the morning yeah. and I'm, I'm hearing the footsteps. It's your family. Yeah. yeah. They cut, it's efficient and they'll make sure you notice it. Yeah. You won't go look every night at the camera unless you, you know, are obsessed. Um, but, but so they make sure that you wake and you notice it. Um, for me, it's to make sure that I am, that I realize that I'm in a safe place, yeah. that I emotionally am in a safe place because I deal with death every single day. And I deal with people's grief of that death. And it is painful. And it is powerful. And sometimes 
I go home and I just sit and tell my husband, I don't know how long I, much longer I can do this. And, and he says, you can keep doing as long as you need to, as long as you're told to. And what I understand is that I have made a pact with spirit, I'll keep doing this, and this was years ago, if you help me forget. So what happens is by the next day, someone will say to me, you know Teresa that came in yesterday, that's grandfather, and I'll say, I don't remember. And I don't. And they have to remind me of everything for me to even get bits and pieces. So I can't go backwards and remember because I'd have to carry that. And I believe that our brains can only take in so much of that. And so I've made that pact with them that I'll keep doing this as long as I don't remember everything. Mm -hmm. The big things I do though, my children, you know, those ones I remember. And those ones, they hit my soul mm -hmm. in, a, in a way that I can't describe. It's a hard lesson. I mean, the, hard, the the children passing is extremely, extremely tough. I think it's our attachment as physical beings when we're attached. Yes. We're, we're so attached to innocent souls or young souls. And how the parents have to see yes. them die. And that's hard. I, yeah, I think that's extremely hard. You know, fires. and uh, There's things that I hear and I see when I'm talking to these parents that I have to tell them. And, the, you know, the first question is always, did they suffer? Mm. And I, I always ask, if you ever do do a reading, please ask, do you want to know everything? because I want you to think about that. Then when they ask me that question, I'll say, I haven't asked it yet, so I want you to know I haven't asked that yet, so this is not a response to what they're telling me, but I wanna make sure you really need to know that information. Do you really want that information? And I give them a second chance to say no. Do some children suffer? Briefly. Do you feel like they're trying to grab hold of any, everything, like anything and everything because they need to feel the connection again? Is Yes, but that is not a connection. That's a suffering. That's a guilt. That's a, that's a guilt from the parent. Like, oh, my child suffered and I, I didn't. Because we take everything up from, for our children, right? So how does that serve them to know that information? Do children suffer briefly? We all do when we pass. It's very brief, though. I really believe that spirit pulls us out of our bodies before that horrible suffering that we imagine um, one of my friends said that she's writing a book called The Stories We Tell Us Ourselves. Yeah. And I love that. It's so powerful. And um, she said, you know, when she said that, that's the first thing that went through my head is this is the stories we tell ourselves. Yeah. But that isn't the reality of what occurred. So I don't believe the spirit world would ever let a child go through a massive suffering of loss, of death. Um, in, in even when we're molested or raped or any of those things or children we we pop out of our bodies we're we're not even watching it it's not we're not part of that anymore we close off to that and that's spirit protecting us and even though we know those things occurred we that's why we spend years trying to connect to the feeling of what happened to us yes. i don't know why i guess it could be healing but spirit gave us a protection for a reason and so i always feel that spirit is in the charge of when we experience that if we ever need to um, so what do you do to relax, keep calm? How do you in enjoy yourself? <laughs> well, I'm not a TV watcher unless it's documentaries <laughs> about this stuff, so that's <laughs> not it. Um, I really just stay in quiet. I, I don't sleep well, and so I love to be able to be in quiet. Um, I love to swim. Yeah. It's something I love to do. I love, you know, jacuzzi. Water. Yeah. Water is my go-to always I love to go to the ocean and sit and watch the beach and uh, the, the waves at the beach and I'll do that for hours and hours and hours with my husband it is my safe place it's my serenity I wait for the dolphins every single time and if they don't come I'm sad yeah. you know I leave going what happened yes. where are the dolphins um, but I I am so uh, peaceful when I'm in that place I read do, do you find that people now have to occupy themselves, whether it's phones or different things, t because now they don't get to hear their voice or themselves or anything they're supposed to feel because we're so entertained by phones or TV or what's supposed to happen or I need to get to work and I need to jump here, jump there. Do you feel like that interferes? I think we've always been busy all through the centuries, yeah. you know, working, achieving, getting, gaining, survival, even, you know, way back when, surviving. Um, but yes, I... My feeling is is it's one of the greatest gifts we have is the internet and things like that. It's also one of the greatest downfalls we have. Yeah. And we can't be in ourselves. I was talking to you when we walked in about sacred acoustics, which is Dr. Alexander's friend, yeah. uh, and he's the guinea pig for them. I do that a lot. I put on my headphones and I listen to this beautiful acoustic music. And um, it is the um, sound waves, and yeah. it actually takes your brain to two different places. And it's really interesting, like I do the ohm, yeah. 
and um, I, I become peaceful immediately. I see myself coming out of my, I don't come out of my body, I'm not an astral projector, but I literally will see myself come out of my body and start walking on the clouds. I've had experiences where I've seen the crystals in heaven. Um, I've tried to go into them because I can see the souls in the crystal. Um, and of but course, how, that how does that work? Sorry, that's a new one to me. How, how does that one work? The crystals in the. Uh, I don't know. It's just what I saw. Um, so there, there was crystals. You saw crystals in the so crystals in the cloud. Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, so huge, and it was carrying the souls basically. So it must have been the other side of the veil. Interesting. And I just saw it as a giant, beautiful uh, quartz crystal. That they, I could feel myself kind of step into that, and. Um, I've had three experiences in the afterlife, all very powerful in my journey. I don't talk about all of them, but I have had three. I had a brain tumor and um, non-cancerous, but nonetheless aggressive. And um, that was an experience. I also worked for hospice and they took us into a hypnotic state that was unbelievably deep with a psychiatrist. And I had a conversation with God and I was sobbing because we were learning how to let go of everything so that we'd understand what the hospice patient feels. I've never had anything like that before where I was begging him not to make me leave my children or he, she, God. Um, and I was told, you know, never will you be gone from them no more than I'm gone from you. And I had this enormous experience. I woke up sobbing from, they got me out of this a deep, they couldn't get me out of it. And he was right in front of me, the doctor. Yes. And I was sobbing and I looked around and nobody was crying. And I thought, didn't you just have this unbelievable, what's wrong with you? And I'm uh, mm -hmm. doing this, you know, and I was there again. I was there. And then I did a Reiki session where that I, when they um, attuned to me, I couldn't come out of it, of that sense of being there again. So it's happened to me numerous times, but three of which were very big deals to me. Interesting. Yeah. So for people who don't know, like you mentioned with Reiki, like a lot of people don't know what Reiki is. What, what do you describe Reiki as? Reiki is energy healing. Um, it is, Usu Reiki is what I do. It is a way to move energy around into the body without touch, but it feels like touch. Okay. So um, I had a client that she was someone's friend and she was at a party, it, kind of a party type scene. It was actually a, a big uh, uh, a psychic fair. And I saw her across the room, this woman, and I, I, she lit up um, and I knew she lit up in, in the, the rectal area, and I knew something was really wrong. And I went to a teacher that was there, and I said, you know, what should I do? What do you think I should do? And she said, if she doesn't get the message, this is not the time. If she doesn't get the message from you, she'll get it from someone else. Spirit wants her to have it. Mm -hmm. And I went back, and it was still there and still there, and I'm thinking, Spirit wants her to have it. So I walked up to her. I just disregarded that, mm -hmm. which probably wasn't the best thing. And I said, um, how are you feeling? Mm -hmm. And she said, I, I've been fine. I'm great. I'm doing great. And I, and I said, um, um, can you know? Have you lost some weight? Are you sure you're feeling okay? I just want to suggest you go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And she goes, "Why?" And I said, "I don't know. I just want to. Can you please?" She did. She had rectal cancer, and so I did. Speaking of Reiki, um, what happened was is she went. It, it basically saved her life. Mm -hmm. Spirit did. Um, I'm so glad I did go up to her. I'm so glad I disregarded and listened to spirit. Mm -hmm. um, the teacher wasn't wrong. She's right about what she said. It just wasn't that timing that was right. Okay. And. Um, and I uh, did Reiki on her for uh, like four or five months. I went to her house for free, and I did Reiki. I do Reiki on cancer patients for free when I have time. And um, and Reiki is the transferring of energy, so we're bringing energy and we're creating it and we're, we're throwing. We're it. moving it out, <coughs> and transforming yes. it, transmuting it basically into yeah. into outer and you know getting rid of it and allowing the flow to go through. Yes, because we get blocked. We have yeah. meridians and they're blocked, yes. and so we want to unblock those so that the energy can move through. Yeah. It also brings a state of peace of mind, so it's it helps with the, the state of mind. And the more peaceful you are when you're ill, the easier it is to move through that illness. So I love working with pancreatic cancer patients because of that, because they're in so much pain. And I can get them to lift out of their bodies. A lot of them say, it's th I, I felt like I was gone for six hours. Yeah. Six hours I felt like I was pain-free. Yeah. And I had just been doing the Reiki for 45 minutes. So it can be very powerful. Yeah. But that state of mind shifts, and again, your perception yeah. has a very powerful hold on you. And um, it kind of takes you to a different level of spiritual uh, essence so that you're not in the pain level of your brain yes. <coughs> so it shifts that <laughs> so with all these experiences like you you you're going through so many different levels of different 
uh, abilities. I mean, this is not just one. This is you. You are hitting many, many things, and this journey that you're on right now. This is, um, you know, I use the word light worker, light entity, light warrior, and we we hear this. A lot of people don't even understand what that is because it's a new terminology to people. Well, what's light? And do do you feel like this is the part where this is this was your perp- like 100% your purpose is to just do this, like to take care of other people, to heal people, to transition people into what they're supposed to be going through, deal with the grief. Sorry. Sorry, I need to pause it just for a second because Spirit walked in the room and they actually shut my hearing off on one side. And so I just need that to go away. I'm just going to ask yeah. them to make that go away. <laughs> and I know that sounds crazy, <laughs> but they did. And I lost half of what you said. Um, and I apologize, That's but fine. a bunch of, I think they're angelic because it was very strong in my ear. So we've got some angels in here now, so we'll probably get some more information. So go ahead. I'm so sorry. Uh, no, no. It's <laughs> um, and I was feeling the shaking in my body, actually. Yeah, it's very, very <laughs> strong. It's very strong. They literally shut off my, I, it was like a high buzz and then stop. When the high buzz for me is a higher vibration. So if you're a worker and you get that and high buzz, yes. that means you're, hi- you're vibrating higher and something's in the room with you to help yeah. you. Okay. Because, yeah, I, I, I've had that. and I. Yeah, it was really strong. Um, so with, with all these different parts, it was back to all these different parts that you've taken or, or, or abilities that you have. Do you feel like this, is, this was your, your real purpose, was to help guide everybody who was here? Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I think my real purpose is to guide myself. I think loving myself was my purpose here. And then a little portion of loving myself has, or maybe a good portion, has to do with helping others. So the real purpose is self-love, which I have not totally achieved. I'm uh, working on it. it. It's a it's a hard thing, like the loving yourself. I think because I think a lot of people struggle with the love yourself. Oh gosh, it's hard. You know, the world says it's all outer. Yeah. The spirit says it's all inner, and our brains say it's both. So integrating all of that is really hard yes. and knowing what to do with it. And my soul center, I know is beautiful. I know I'm a beautiful, in my soul center, I know I'm amazingly beautiful human being. And I know that I have an angelic presence and I know all these things. Uh, people tell me all the time, but I also know it for me. And I don't mean I'm an angel. I, please don't misunderstand <laughs> what I just said, but I just have that presence about yeah. me, that motherly kind yeah. of, ange- that's how they are. Um, but what I also know is that my my uh, outer body is changing, and I don't love it. You know, I don't love what ha- what's happening. COVID, I gained 13 <laughs> pounds. Don't love it. You know, so I have to integrate the understanding that that's just a small little portion of what I'm here to, to love yes. is my outer body. The most important part is my inner self, my honesty, my integrity, my character, my goodness, um, my 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 ability to to be in sincerity and and give love and yeah. receive receive love yes. is the is the big word right there i don't receive very easily so i can tell you what i know about me but if you were to say it to me i'd probably reject it and go oh, yes. no 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 i'm not just like i just did i quantified yes. that right i'm not an angel but you don't this you know and i get all nervous but i know i have an angelic side to me and i love that part of me i love it and I wish I would embrace it more and accept it more so that I could expand it more. Yes. The more we embrace, the more we expand. So if you embrace loving yourself, all it is is an awareness and expansion. When you get an expanded awareness of the beauty inside of you, you're now expanding it out to everyone and yes. universally the energy is being felt. Yes. So that's why it's so utterly important to know you. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so, you, so you do past life regressions. I do. And actually, we actually did one. (laughs) I don't remember. Remember I told (laughs) you I forget. (laughs) Yeah, it was about three, four years ago we did one. And Uh um, so this portion of uh, the past life regression, because a lot of people, again, don't understand what is a past life regression. A lot of people culturally, they will know we're not supposed to have past lives. And whatever they believe in, that's respecting whatever they believe. It's just great. But uh, when people are, when, when you do this, what is this showing people? Like what when I when people come to you and I, I'll, I'll go into myself afterwards, but what you what, what do you think people are coming to you for? Why are you Healing. taking them back? Healing. So we have all these issues here. Some of them are created here, and some of them are from other journeys. Whether that be lives between lives, which could be the journey in the afterlife, which almost everyone believes. Yes. I don't know many who don't that are believers at all. Um, um, so. 
and it could be an actual life journey you've lived. Um, and I, uh, the bottom line is what they take us to is what we need healing in. So say someone is struggling with um, uh, not being able to have children and they're fighting it. And uh, they come to me for a past life and they find out that their children passed in a past life and it was extremely painful. Could it be the unconscious mind taking them there? Could be. Could be. I'm not in their mind. Did it help them heal? Yes. Yeah. So does it matter? No. Because it's all about healing. And so I always tell my clients, um, it's not a movie that's playing in front of you. It's a knowing. Yes. And your soul needs to know this information for whatever reason. And if it's, if it's given to you by spirit, it's pure. So take it and use it. Yeah. When, when actually we did mine, and it was interesting. Um, so we did the cloud. <laughs> and then uh, it went back into, it was um, responsibility. Where I didn't want responsibility. And then my life is all about responsibility, I would, with this place that you yeah. see. And it was really like what would happen in that thing, which actually helped me. Actually, it was, um, it was very uh, insightful. Uh, I think it was very valuable. Um, it really helped me understand like why I was hesitant from responsibility of people dying in a past life. Mm -hmm. uh, I, th I thought that was magical. And it really does. Like I, I thought it was, I've never heard of it. It was just by chance that this came up. And the, what, what I found even more interesting was after we had done it, uh, whether it was Aztecs or something down in the Mayans. Um, I couldn't remember the name of what it was, Aztecs or Mayans. And I was walking through the living room and I see a cartoon playing on the TV with the with the Pacific Aztec symbol or whatever it was at that moment was on the TV. And it was a cartoon, cow the cowardly dog. I think that was the cartoon my kids were watching. Mm -hmm. And it was like I was trying to remember my brain. All of a sudden it was just stuck on the TV where they paused the channel and it was just stuck in the symbol. And I thought that was just magical. Like, what are the chances of? Exactly. And that's, well, there, nothing's by chance. Um, that's not that I mean everything is planned event, because it's not. If everything was a planned event, there would be no free will. So I'm really glad that helped you, and I, I know that I did mine, and it helped me a great deal. I have a thing with wolves. I'm so attached to them, I can't explain it. And I was with someone years ago who had a wolf, and she had a sanctuary, and I, she, one just kept coming towards me, and she finally, and they're ta basically somewhat tamed when they are in sanctuary. She let me get near it enough, and it, it scared me at first because it jumped, I have a picture, it jumped up on me, put its hands on my shoulders and looked me right in the eye, and I knew it was seeing into my soul. And then it just got down, and then let me pet it and put its ears back as though I was you know, the, uh, the alpha, which I'm not. So I was really surprised. And she was blown away. And we both just, I mean, I should have been terrified because this is a, a wild animal, but I wasn't. And when I did my past life, I was crying. I didn't want to come back because I was leaving my wolves. And I was hysterical almost. And I kept saying, no, I can't leave them. Please don't make me leave them again. I, and I was just heartbroken. And that helped me see my connection with them because it's so strong. I have pictures in my house. I have statues in my office. I, I just, I love them. And I look in the eyes even of the statues and I can feel them. They resonate in my being. So, you know, for whatever reason, I was laying in bed one night and I, all my students know this because I, I, I talked about it because I didn't know what it meant. And I opened my eyes and a wolf was flying over my head. A wolf was flying over my head. I was calling wolves <laughs> the wolf. Um, and I didn't know what it meant. And all my students were searching and trying to find out what it meant. And it just, uh, uh, it, it meant spiritual being and all these, it, you know, had a big meaning. But um, I was blown away because it was visual for me. It was yeah. so strong. And it didn't scare me, but it, I remember sinking down in my pillow like it was going to come at me. Um, or hit me with its belly or something, or feet. But yeah. it literally, so... There's meaning to everything that we feel that energy of, and that's what you went through. So we won't go after the after the show and go and catch a wolf. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know. Love them. So, um, and they're very family. They're very family oriented. They protect their young, and they're very much like us that way. Mm -hmm. And they're very wise. And let me just tell you, they do look into your soul like we do as mediums yeah. and intuitives. We can't read our it, people's minds. This is important statement. Yeah. Um, if we could, everybody would be a mess because they wouldn't want to be near us. But um, I've never met someone that can actually read the mind. Um, I actually saw um, 
a mind, uh, the mind, I can't remember his name, but anyway, he was a, a mind guy in, 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 Vegas? in Las Vegas. Yeah. I think I watched him too. And he, you say the number? Yeah. And then he reads the number? Yeah. I, yeah I he told me how he does. I'm not going to say. <laughs> but at the, uh, or gave me a little bit of it. Um, but honestly, he said, I'm not reading your mind. I'm reading your body language. I'm reading this. I'm reading that. So, um, and I convinced you that I can read your mind, which gives me more power too. So yeah. it's very, uh, and there's much more to it, I'm sure, much, much yeah. more. But we can't do that. So that's the good news. You come into my office, I can't read your mind, neither can spirit, and that's really good news. Mm-hmm. And they can't see anything private, which is another very important thing to be able to say because we all have our secrets in our closets and we yes. all want privacy in those times mm-hmm. and in, in, those, in those spaces. And so it's really important to let people know that um, we, can't, we can't see that and neither can they. Yes. They come when you need them or you call them. Do, do people actually um, expect you to have that, though? like to, to, uh-huh. to read that? They, they walk in there telling me, can you tell me this? And now they really want you to, they really are asking for this, right? Yes. And That's why I say I like intuitive. Yeah. So this is what I say to them. If I knew your free will, it wouldn't be free will. It would be a planned event. If it's a planned event, there is no free will. So what are you doing here? So how this is how it looks when we're in the afterlife. There's a room of knowledge, and in there, there's contracts. I think people call it the acoustic records. I can't even say it right because I don't relate to it. Um, I knew it as the room of knowledge, and um, you, you basically, I, I would call it checking boxes, but you're not checking boxes, yes. and you're making decisions of what you want your journey. So if your soul wants to resonate the understanding of being married, you'll be married. You may be 98, but you'll be married. How old you are, who you marry, the kind of marriage you have, et cetera, et cetera, is all free will for your soul to grow and expand. You have choices. If you didn't have choices, you would not grow. So I try to tell people we can see a trajectory if you stay on this path or very lightly veer from it, but you won't. Okay, so um, if you'd like it to be the trajectory we see, let's stay on this particular path, and it, it will look this particular way as you go, yeah. and hopefully you can have that trajectory. You're not doing anything right or wrong. When people are told, you've got this opportunity to do this, and, and you could blow it with your free will, and then it happens that they don't get it, they come to me crying and saying, I had the opportunity to be married with this wonderful man who had, you know, he's rich, he was yeah. this, he was that, and, and, they, and, they, and they say, I blew it, and I say, that's not what happened. That's not what happened, and they didn't see all that completely. It's not possible. So, um, because free will is involved in that person, too. Yeah. So it has to make sense. It's kind of like when I'm doing a deck of cards with my students and they flip a card over and they say, that's exactly what spirit wants you to hear. Exactly. And I say, really, put it back in the deck and prove it to me, I'll pull it again. And they look at me just terrified. And I say, I don't ever want you to say that to a client. This is your way of opening up your pathway to spirit world to give the message they want you to give. So certain words will stand up on that card Certain feelings will come from that card, and that's what you're going to give them. You're not going to say, this is exactly what spirit wants you to hear, because you can't prove that. You have to have something that is making sense. Yes. So that resonation part, because a lot of people, like you can tell them something, and they it just won't stick to them. And then you tell them something else, and this will glue to them like there's no, no other business. So that part of resonating, and that again takes you back to that journey, right, of staying on the life path and staying what you're supposed to do, because this is taking you to where you need to go. That's the part of resonation, right? Mm -hmm. So people won't understand with what we might be talking about now. This may not even connect with them at all. And some people watching will say, wow, I love this. Yeah. And and that was what they need to see or they were supposed to see at that time. I would, yes. And I would love for people to call it the soul path journey instead of life path journey. (laughs) I see life path too. But when you, and I just got that information, by the way, I don't normally say that, but I feel that that's what it really is. Um, Life path might be the job. Soul path is what they're really asking about. What is my soul supposed to be resonating in? What am I supposed to be doing for my my journey here so my soul grows? That's a soul path. Life path is all about our life here, our worldly things. So which is it that they really want is what I'm just hearing from the angelic realm right now. So I'm saying it. Uh, I guess I'm going to take that with me when I leave. I just learned something. I'll try and copyright it before you get out. Yeah, (laughs) thank you. (laughs) Um, No, I want to thank you for everything you've brought to the table. This has been very insightful and very magical to have you here. And I appreciate your gift to the world and what you're doing for others. Thank you. And uh, yeah, it's it's been great for us. It has been. Can I close with this? Yes, please. I want people to understand that what you try to control controls you. 
and what you run from chases you. So step in front of it, walk into it, and you will heal. Walk into what you fear, and you will heal. I'm talking internal, obviously. If you run from it, it will chase you. If you try to control it, that's all you'll think about. It will control you. So if you walk into it, there's a healing space there with spirit. Walk into your soul and deal with these demons you have or these fears you have um, or these denials you have. And when you do that, you expand your awareness of who you are, which is really what you're here to do. So, Thank you very much, Susan. Thank, Thank you. Much you. It was Thank so you. lovely. Thank, Thank you for having you. me. <laughs>